welcome best-selling author, political candidate, and uh, mother, Angela Stanton King. Welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much so, for having me on. Of course. So, you know, you have been uh, you have been on the Hollywood Unlocked blog. You've been on the Hollywood Unlocked show. We just recently interviewed your daughter, JB's, um, who's been very vocal about, you know, her movement uh, and the trans movement that she's a part of. And so we wanted to welcome you here because although you've been talked a lot about, you haven't been talked to. And I just thought it was fair to open up the conversation to hear your point of view as you are a very vocal person. And so I want to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. And so um, one of the things that or at least once where I first saw you, you were, um, you know, once, once I became uh, aware of who Angela Stan King was, it was when you were pardoned by former President Donald Trump. And uh, when you were released, it almost seemed as if you had taken on the life of wanting to change the country and join, I think, the conservative party. Right. Well, just to clarify, I got released in 2005. So I wasn't released from prison when I got the pardon from President Trump. And it was my experience after getting out of prison and rebuilding my life and getting educated on politics that I decided that I wanted to become more of a conservative versus a Democrat. And I'd always been involved in the nonprofit sector and working in my community. So I thought that Congress would basically be the same thing. So when you got released from prison and then later pardoned, at what part during that journey did you decide that in terms of politics, the conservative party was more aligned with where your personal interests lie? Um, from my own personal experience, you know, for one, I had been born into poverty, you know, generational welfare recipient. And when I got released from prison because I was a convicted felon, I couldn't get welfare benefits. And because I couldn't get you know, food stamps and Section 8 and be able to depend on that assistance on the first of every month. It really kind of like kicked me out of the nest and made me discover my greatness. And I realized that I could not only become a business owner, but I could become financially free by starting my own business. And I realized that a lot of the Democrat policies to me that constantly push welfare, it keeps people like me and people from the community that I come from stuck because we get content and we get comfortable with receiving a certain amount of money every month from the government that we know is guaranteed. So when you look at the past four years that we had under the Trump administration, I know that he, you know, pardoned you. And so I don't know your relationship with him or what your thoughts on him were. When you look at the practices that he had with the kids in cages at the border or, you know, even the selection of people in his cabinet, like Betsy DeVos was over education who, probably couldn't even think herself out of a Pringle scan. Do you align yourself with those policies or is it just the conservative, overall conservative ideal for what America should look like? So as a criminal justice reform advocate, when you say kids in cages, you have to understand that my perception of kids in cages is totally different from what the media is hyped up. I work in juvenile detention centers. I've worked with our kids that are in cages across this nation that somehow we have forgotten about. I also know that as an American citizen, if you're arrested and you have your child with you, your child is not going to go to jail with you. You're going to be separated from your child. This is American law. I, too, was separated from my child after giving birth in chains and had her snatched right out of my arms. And Donald Trump was not the president. So when you come to a certain country and there are laws that apply to their own citizens, then you are going to be expected to be handled by those same laws. So any person in America that has ever been arrested and had their child with them, they've been separated from their family. So I understand how media hype is, and I understand the difference between what's factual and what's just being blown up in the media to control the emotions of the people. See, here's the thing that I have a question about. You said our kids as if the kids in cages, the immigrant children are cannot also be black. There are black children in some of those cages, in so fact. A, a vast, a, 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 a big majority of them are Haitian, which are black people, right? So I wasn't, so I when I said our kids, I wasn't speaking about color. I'm speaking about American children. So I'm not basing it yes. on color. But I, I'm basing it on color saying okay. that if I see a black child from any country in a cage, as a black person who's pro-black, I'm going to feel away. So I guess my question to you directly is, the day that Trump was elected as president was the day that we had the highest instances of hate crimes against people of color that entire year. He has unprecedentedly ushered in a time of hate being emboldened. How do you reconcile being about your community with a man who's literally and statistically, not media wise, literally 
emboldened hate against your own people. I so don't I think that, that how, so, how so, you? so, and again, I thought that this interview was going to be about me and my son and not about some people trying to make me defend Trump. But let me tell you about what I know about Trump and what I know about the Black Lives Matter movement. I know that the Black Lives Matter movement was built off of the backs of dead black men that were killed up under the Obama administration. Obama and Joe Biden did nothing at all to rectify the behavior of police killing. So a lot of that rolled over on Trump. Now, what I do know from being able to work with him personally as being someone that honestly believes Black Lives Matter, I know that this president was pro-life. That's why I stood behind him because I understand the racism behind abortion. I also know that this president permanently funded black historical colleges so they didn't have to continue to come back and forth every year for money. I also know that this president prior to COVID had the lowest black unemployment. I also know that this president was responsible for not only signing an executive order reuniting the immigrant families at the border because the news never reported that, but he also signed the First Step Act, which I was very effective in, which reunited a lot of our families that were separated by the 94 crime bill put in place by mass incarceration. So just like you were talking about, you know, supporting this man or the kids in cages or our kids or all kids. My thing is, these are things that I was fighting for before Trump got in office. So if we really care about reuniting families. If we really care about children in cages then the fight starts at home. It doesn't start when the media creates a frenzy about people crashing our borders. So my thing is, when we're talking about America and we're talking about Congress and we're talking about presidents, the way that I look at it is, I'm a parent. So as a parent, I have a responsibility to take care of my children and, and, and the responsibility I have in my home. Now that doesn't mean that I won't help the children that are across the street, down the street, or around the corner. But that means that I have a responsibility to take care of my children first. And once my home is taken care of, then absolutely I will help other people. So I think that we have all had a misunderstanding when it comes to our responsibilities as a nation. Now, I'm not saying don't take care of other people, but I am saying, wait a minute, if we can fight for them, then most certainly we can fight for us. So I think that this is all about perception. Well, the, I'm glad that you said all that. Because I'm glad you said all that because the reason why we did invite you here, and speaking of children, was to talk about your child that you continue to misgender. So I do want to go to that. But the reason why Let's I asked get, you I'm so glad. I'm so glad you said that because do you... Do you see? But let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. We're going to get to that. I didn't interrupt you. No, no, I didn't, okay. interrupt, I didn't interrupt you. Okay, so, all right. I can't I wait. Be very respectful. I want to be very yeah. I can't wait either. We gonna okay. be there. But the the reason I, I, the reason why we ask the politics is because for some of our audience they may not know you. I know you from social media, but I don't know you. And I think one thing that we try to do here on Hollywood Unlocked is allow people to show themselves and and who they are. Right? You have been very vocal in your support of Trump and in certain politics, and you are very articulate in how you lay it out. But sometimes when I look at like Diamond and Silk, they black and look like us and they sometimes sound articulate, but they full of shit. And I'm not saying you are, but I'm trying to understand for our audience where your mind is, because when we do get to talking about your child, you just talked about how we got to care for our kids back home. And the mm -hmm. purpose of what led us here beyond getting to know who you were was the fact that you are in a very big fallout with your own child. So I did want to kind of put that context out there, but I hand it back over to you. And okay, now. It. Let's address the fact that you just basically said that I'm misgendering my own child because it's the audacity for me. Because what I have right here in my hand is called a receipt. This is a birth certificate, right? I was there. <laughs> I gave birth. See, I don't remember seeing anybody on this panel that was in the hospital room with me when I gave birth to my son. Now, I don't know if any of you have looked down in his pants to see exactly what his anatomy is, whether he has a penis or a vagina. But the last time I checked his mama, he had a penis. So for me, I feel that it's very disrespectful because this is what we have here. There is only one person on this earth that gave birth to Javian. That's me. I can't expect anybody else to feel the way that I do. Because I'm the only one that is his mother. But what is disrespectful is for you as a man, right? Because that's just like if I see your mama and I say your mama is your daddy. That, that's disrespectful. That is my son. 
Now, if you want to address him as a woman, you can, but to feel like you have the right to force me to call my man child that I birthed, that I raised, that I sacrificed for a woman, that's disrespectful. Now, we don't have to agree, but what gives you, if you all feel like you can pressure me enough to make me believe that he's a woman, then why do you all feel like I don't have the right as his mama to pressure him enough to make him believe that he's a man? How do you all have more rights and influence than me and I'm the mother? That is not how that works. That's no, that is how that works. I don't have more rights over your child than you do, but your child has more rights over their life than you do. Okay. And I exactly. think that why... Why, why you and and this I hope hope and, and I I don't expect us to agree. I expect us to have a dialogue where we can both get out our points of view. And I, if you get something out of it, great. If I get something out of it, great. But you birthed Javian for sure. But then Javian grew into identifying as JBs. And in my world, I'm a gay man. Uh, Blue is is a pansexual. Uh, Damage is a heterosexual man who is raising a young boy. When you raise, your, I'm confused you already. Your child, Break that down for me one more time. Okay. Explain to me what a pansexual okay. is. I, we just all here for okay. understanding. So, so right now, for sure. So I, I and I and, and I'll be honest with you. I, I learned a pansexual last year, so okay. I'm still learning things. Let me first start by saying I am a homosexual like a motherfucker. I am gay, proud to be gay. I I, I wasn't. Uh, I was with women until I was nine. And identified uh, different things that I liked and experiences that led me to identify as a gay man. Blue, do you want to explain what a pansexual is? A pansexual person is, a, is somebody who loves somebody who's male, female, or trans. So we would be the, the people who would find it in our hearts to be able to love somebody like your daughter. And also, there was a point I don't that have, you made. Ma'am, sir, I don't, if you're going to call him my daughter, I'm going to call you a man. If you're going to call him a woman, I'm going to address you as a well, man I'm, for the I'm, rest I'm, of the I'm show. Gonna, gonna okay, well, let's just call him point, Jay. Though. Let's just say Jay. No, let's be never, respectful. Okay. Let's be respectful I to everybody because I am his mother and I do deserve respect as his mother because you wouldn't want me to disrespect your now? mother. Can I speak now? Can you, I, can yes, I speak sir, now? you can. So I never, first of all, your daughter asked to be called that. I never asked. But you're not talking to my daughter right now. You're talking to me. You're talking to okay, me. So, You're not talking so to I'm my daughter. To you so my son, so my my all, son. First of all, take the bass out of your voice. I'm my son to right here. Okay, take sir. Okay, voice. sir. Take the bass out your voice. Go ahead, sir. Whatever you need me to be. I'm listening, sir. That's what delusion does. Make you believe you can be anything you want to be. Yeah, we not we not gonna be we not gonna have a respectful conversation if you gonna keep addressing my son as a woman. Not when you talking to me, sir. We will have a respectful conversation, but here's what I ask, right? That's what your daughter, your your child. Let me say this: your child came on this show and identified as a female, right? right? And so, out of respect for your child, I, 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 let me say your child. I'm going to refer to your child with the proper pronouns, and that is she and her, because that's how your child wants to be acknowledged, right? I think what what you're doing right now with Blue is you're taking her sexuality and you're weaponizing her with it by calling her... Let me respond. Let me respond. I, I still haven't responded, though. So... Wait, let me hand it to Blue first, and then... Let me okay. hand it to Blue first, and then to uh, Angela. Okay, go ahead, Blue. You asked the question about what gives people the right to call your child what we're calling your child, right? And I have an actual answer for you that is scientifically based and not based on emotion. Mm -hmm. you, you, have a, you had a male child. Male refers to gender mm -hmm. that is something that is biological mm -hmm. but being a woman mm -hmm. is a personal truth mm -hmm. that's actually not gender identity and gender are different you can google it yourself i didn't make this up so yes that birth certificate speaks about your child's genitals it says nothing about your child's gender identity okay it's can I very speak? different no i'm not done yet though. Okay. you spoke a lot so i'm okay. not let me, let me finish all right so what i'm saying is you keep conflating gender with gender identity and that is where you lose the audience because your child can be born a male all day long. Your child's gender identity is female and we're choosing to respect a legal adult. So okay. legally speaking, I'm actually being very respectful by okay. trusting a legal adult to tell me what to call them. Where did you That's get your, your, where question. did you, where did you study and where did you get your information the Harvard, from? 
So the answer is the Harvard School of Public Health. What degree do answer. you what degree do you have when it comes to gender dysphoria or transvestite disorder? Because I have a degree. I have a bachelor's degree. Uh -huh. Not only do I have a bachelor's degree, excuse me, it's my turn to talk, ma'am. Not only do I have a bachelor's degree, I have the knowledge and I also have the experience because I have raised this child from birth. My child allegedly. is, excuse me. You, you allegedly is, raised that child. Ma'am, ma'am, I don't, I, so what, your where is your proof that I didn't? Where is your proof that I didn't it raise? Because right now what you're doing is slander and defamation. Because you're she trying to tell a mother she didn't raise her child. Ma'am, I only went to prison for two years. He was three. I got out when he was five. He's been with me ever since, okay? I raised this child. This is a male child with a feminine personality. Your personality does not determine your sex. You cannot have gender without having sex. It's all tied together. That is the reason why when you have someone that is transgender that chooses to become another sex, it is based off of what? Male or female. You can't have gender without sex. He has a feminine personality. Absolutely. Now, Let's just get for real for a minute when we're and, and, and I want to be clear because there are a lot of articles and a lot of media reports out and a lot of people that try to make it seem as if I do not love my son or that I am against the LGBTQ community. I am not against the LGBTQ community. I have plenty of friends. I'm sure you all know Kellen Derrick. Ask Kellen Derrick who helped him start his business in his basement in his kitchen. That was me. I got plenty of friends in the community. A lot of people try to compare my son to Shauna. When I met Shauna, Shauna told me her name was Shauna. I ain't never been in Shauna pants. Shauna is my friend. Shauna is not my son. What Shauna does does not impact my life. I am a mother. If there is a disorder or if there is whatever it is that my son wants to identify with that leads him to believe that he is a woman, and if that process is going to lead to dismemberment or castration, as a mother, I have a right to protect my lifeline and my bloodline. Now, you can roll your eyes in the back of your head all you want, but I have the right to protect oh, I'm my, I'm not talking to you too, sir. I'm talking to Miss Blue over here. I have a right to, as that. a mother, I don't yeah. have to agree, but it's not hate. It's not, and, and, and you also have to understand, you also have this to understand. Said, wait, wait, but this is what your child said about your relationship with the gay community, because they did say exactly what you just said. So I want to make sure to validate what you said, but this is what JB said on the show. About I saw your relationship with other people. I saw what JB said and... <laughs> And so we got to actually has a lot of gay and trans friends. Believe it or not, Angela has a lot of gay and trans friends. She has a lot of gay and trans friends. She just did an interview the other day with Shauna Brooks. Um, do you guys know who Shauna is? Yes, yes. Trans girl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So trans girl, she respects her pronouns. <laughs> she respects. Oh, get out of here! Are you serious? Yeah. She respects wait, her wait, pronouns. Wait, wait, she used wait, to do. Stop, stop. She she re, she re, she responds to Shauna as a she. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So my question is, why would you do that with Shauna, but not your own? I child? did not give birth to Shauna. I didn't give birth to Shauna. You you can't compare Shauna to my son. Shauna didn't come out my body. I didn't raise Shauna. I knew my son had a penis before he did. What you all are asking me to do as a mother, you're asking me to lie to myself about. Who I know my son is. Now, he's beautiful. He, 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 he has an awesome personality. He's intelligent. I love him. I just do not agree with the confusion. I, again, I'm his mother. Now, you all don't have to agree with me, but that's my child. Did your mother agree with everything y'all did? No, I know, I know, I know, I know Damage has a question, and I want to be clear, Angela. I don't want to fight with you. I'm not here to, um, to uh, force you to understand or believe anything. What I'm trying to do, and so if I can just ask, if we can try to all bring it down a little bit so we can get to a place where we can both talk and hear each other, right? I'm not going to attack you for being a gay man who believes that anybody who identifies however they identify should be respected as such, because that's what I believe. Now, I, I, I want to get to the heart of what the reason is why you refuse to accept your child's pronouns, hold on, not, and, and I'm trying to understand, is it because you're a mother 
who's trying to hold on to the identity they want for their child and not embrace who they see themselves to be? Is it ignorance? Is it just what? I don't know what it is. That's why we're here to have it's, this conversation. It's, I, I'm, a mother, it's not, I, I'm a mother that knows exactly what she gave birth to. I gave birth to a man child. If, if my man child decides, right, and, and we can talk about science because I know girlfriend got a hell of a degree over there. We can talk about science and we can talk about what's facts. And what's facts is even once you go all the way through with the transition, because I do have plenty of friends that are in the movement, you still have that realization that you are not a biological female. So as a parent, what I'm saying is, son, Hold on. Just like you said, Jason, you said when you was younger, you had been with women like you gave yourself time to, to figure out what it was that you wanted. My son is only 19 years old. If you decide to make this decision, this is not the time you are too young. I don't think that he has lived long enough to make this type of life changing decision. And as a mother, I have the right to say, son, I love you. But no, I don't agree with this lifestyle. Son, yes. I accept you absolutely, Javian, but I don't accept Boom Quisha. Maybe I don't like Boom Quisha. Maybe she got a nasty attitude. Maybe she disrespectful. But what you all don't well, have my, a right my, to my do. Family, my, family, my, family, my family stayed out of my business during my, my experience, during my journey. That was the difference. My family didn't interject or disrespect my choices. They supported me. They asked people in the family to stay out of my business. They allowed me to grow into who I am and still to this day support me and never disrespected so because sex. your family was like that is our family supposed to be like that so because your mother didn't care whether or not you would castrate yourself does that mean i'm not supposed to care about my son dismembering yeah, his so body my mother, I, my, my mother my mother wasn't in prison like you she was on drugs so she was in prison by drugs so so both yeah i never smoked crack yeah, yeah i got sure, money sure. Right, yeah, yeah. My, my mother my mother crack my mother smoked crack my mother did heroin she did all that but she also birthed me and right. she birthed me and brought me into a world that allowed me to figure out who i was and i'm not saying that you're a good mother mother or a bad mother because i'm not here to cast judgment on you i've never cast a judgment on any guest that's been on the show what i'm trying to understand is your daughter your child does not identify as bonquisha your daughter has said call me jb's I am she. And I said, and, so and I said, wait, wait, and I said, I right? said, because I gave him his name, right? Me and his father picked his name out, spelled it, filled out the birth certificate because we gave him his name. We have the right to call him by that name. Now, are you saying as a mother that I don't have the right to call my son? By the name that I gave him at birth, it ain't been no name change and it ain't been no transition. So why are you all asking me to respect something that's not even real? It doesn't exist. My answer to that is yes. If your daughter, your child wants to be called what she wants to be called, you should honor that. Well, if yes. your mother want to be called a dumb crackhead hoe, is that what you going to call her? I'm just asking. Yeah. Well, she's dead. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm wait. just asking. My mother is deceased. I'm just wait, asking. Wait, wait, you wait, brought wait, her wait. up. I don't know. I don't have to call my son what he wants me to call him just because he asked me to. Your answer, but see, the problem is you, you, you want to come into this show the way you do your Instagram. And no, this I don't. Show house. You're a guest. No, and I don't know how. I don't have to be a guest. Out. I don't have I don't to be a guest. People, I, <laughs> I didn't ask you to come on your show. show. Okay. You don't have to be. Right. This is not a zoo. This is not a zoo. Exactly. This is not a zoo or a zoo. Okay. So when you throw shots, be prepared to receive them back. I'm not. If I was throwing a shot, hitting, though. although you call my mother a dirt, hold on. I didn't call her. I didn't call her. I said if she wanted to be called. My mother was a dirty crackhead, but see, the way your behavior is, even in my mother's darkest day, she didn't act like you. Well, you came on this listen, show, listen, I ain't never smoked crack or heroin either, and that's probably why I know my son is a man and not a woman. You know so what? fuck you and your show. You're smoking crack. No, that's okay. And you know what? Fuck. Well. <laughs>